I've been to spend the past couple of weeks working on finishing off the uh, the guitar I've, I've already released a couple of videos on but honestly something a lot more pressing has come up uh, that I've been working on and I think it would be a really good idea to share this project with everybody as much as I possibly can. Bit of background to this one, I'm a school teacher, I teach uh, computer science to secondary school children. I've been doing this for a very long time and the recent situation uh, with the world in general has caused an awful lot of problems for my subject and in between the, the, the two lockdowns in the, in the UK and sort of during the last one I've, I've found I have had to be uh, or faced with teaching uh, a lot of children computer science uh, the art of programming, software design, how computers work, sadly without the, the students having any access at all to computers, which is a massive problem and really quite upsetting, and, and especially at the age where they're starting to decide whether this is a subject they, they really, they're interested in, they want to go for or not, and sort of facing various lessons a week without access to a computer is fine for a for a few days, uh, a few lessons you can. There's lots you can do, but uh, but as that seems to be the new norm at the moment, it's 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 really causing me some uh, some grief and upset. So to put a very positive spin on that, uh, I've found in the past whenever I've done physical computing uh, activities with students, anything to do with robots, programming things that move, that flash. Uh, things with lights, servos, sensors, it, it really gets people into the whole subject. So I thought what better than after the Easter holiday really to go back to school with a great big uh, hexapod. Look, robot, 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 robot. A robot that can walk around the classroom and hopefully I can take it into lessons, I can show it to the students, talk about how it's been made, my idea is to make it with simple software that uh, we, we already teach to the students with um, sort of simple, easily accessible components so that anybody who wanted to could uh, more or less replicate the project quickly and easily. I'm Sheen, it's not rocket science! You just have to... Actually... So where, where I've got up to so far... We have a test leg. This is a hexapod leg. Um, I've got this uh, pretty much working, uh, 3D printed and laser cut at home, uh, just a 3018 uh, laser etching machine cutting 3mm ply, 3D printed parts all bolted together and I went for sort of slightly better quality servos, these are Metal Gear uh, 996R servos, but uh, but then they're, they're not massively dear. Um, the brains of the operation and the test rig as well. I was originally going to use a Raspberry Pi Zero for the whole thing. I'm still going to use that, but I stumbled across uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a really powerful little microcontroller. So I wanted to get this uh, get this up and running and, and use this. These things cost three pounds fifty which is next to nothing and there's an awful lot you can do with it so I'm using this for control of the legs, the, the, the servos, for control of the gate and then we'll add the uh, we'll add the Raspberry Pi Zero to give it more functionality later. Oh, come on, it's just a bug. You better put your goggles on. Yes. So this is my idea, this is my plan for the, for the hexapod and that's how far I've got. I've been using Tinkercad to buy by Autodesk to make the 3D printable models and also the flat models for uh, cutting out with the with the 3018 laser cutter. Um, Tinkercad is free to use. It's browser based and really, really, really simple. Just a couple of examples of of what I'm what, I, what I've been doing with this. We have here part of the holder for the servo designed to bolt onto the body. There's recesses cut into it for M4 nuts there. There's a recess up here for the horn of the servo. And Tinkercad lets you export these things directly as a 3D as a 3D model. It's not the fullest featured piece of software, but my idea for this 
is for students to be able to to, to, to apply it on what they've learnt uh, with us at school. Uh, with another servo holder, the other side of the servo holder there, uh, with a, 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 a piece to take a, a bearing on. I'll, I'll talk more about that later, I suppose. And you also have, uh, there's the clip here for the bonnet that uh, powers up to 16 of the servos. We've got one of these on each side. Uh, the other really cool thing about Tinkercad for this is when you export models, you can export them as an SVG for laser cutting or as an STL for 3D printing. So if you make something flat like this, it will just create an SVG. You can laser cut it if you wish, which is really handy. I'll machine them right here. Here we've got the basic setup of electronics I plan to use on the robot, um, pretty much as it will be in the finished thing I think. Um, this is the test rig I've, I've set up. Uh, obviously I'll be getting rid of the breadboard and, uh, and tidying everything up considerably, but uh, this, this is just for testing purposes. So what we've got, we've got the Raspberry Pi Pico here, um, at the moment that's powered by USB from the computer, but uh, powering is going to be taken care of. I have a 7.4 volt LiPo uh, twin cell battery here, which is going into, this might be overkill, but quite a big buck converter. I thought the bigger the better, uh, knowing the, the, the current that, that, that hobby servos can draw when they're uh, placed under load, and I think we'll be placing quite a few of them under load doing this. The other beauty of this, I have a uh, very, very, very stable control of the voltage and I can also play about with the current quite a bit on this. So this is basically feeding at the moment um, two Adafruit uh, 9685, PCA 9685 boards designed to drive 16 servos each. Um, these were the ones they released for the Raspberry Pi as I originally intended to do this on a Raspberry Pi Zero so the Raspberry Pi bonnet format seemed like a good idea at the time, but uh, then I got drawn into doing it on the Pico. Um, it, it seemed more appropriate for the, the, the ends of the project. The Pico is a lot more affordable for a lot of my students and to play about with. Uh, the really, really good thing about this, after a lot of playing about with the, very, with the old deprecated Adafruit drivers, um, it's not too difficult to daisy-chain these together. So I have a board which will take uh, the nine servos on the left-hand side and a board that will take the nine servos on the right-hand side. And here I've just got it set up so I could prove to myself that I can drive both together or independently. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, what I'll do on the actual robot is step down again. I'll take more of the 6-volt current from here, well, nearly 6-volt current, uh, from here and I'll step that down using a much smaller step down converter uh, I'll step that down to uh, just below 5 for the Pico and also for the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero So there's an interesting story with the code um, Kevin McAleer's channel on YouTube, and I'll, I'll link to a specific video, gave me a, a really good clue as to how to get this working. He found an old deprecated set of libraries for MicroPython from Adafruit, for the Adafruit, Adafruit uh, PCA9685 series of boards uh, working on I2C which is really uh, ideal for, for this job, and with pretty much plug and play, they work beautifully on the uh, on, on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Curiously, the Circuit Python libraries, which are supported at the moment by uh, by by Adafruit, don't seem to work quite so flawlessly. So anyway, these are the deprecated libraries, and I'll link to these, and I'll also link to Kevin's video in in the description here. 
but basically we have the PCA9685 driver here uh, which is is pretty self-explanatory it sets up an I2C connection and it, it gives you access to to basically an array of of, uh, of servos we have here the servo driver which isn't again this is this is from the same this is from the same set of uh, Adaf Adafruit libraries um, it's not the fullest featured servo driver in the world but it, it, it does does what we need I mean you've got very handy here you've got the position and release position will let you uh, create uh, or, or, or rather set the position of your servos one by one in degrees radians um, duty cycles so it's quite versatile and if you just provide the index of the servo you you're wanting to to contact it'll return the current uh, the current position in in the current duty cycle anyway that's that's being given to the, the servo there's also quite a handy release uh, function thrown in or method so that's yeah it, it's it's not the fullest featured thing but it, it I'm, I'm thinking it'll do what we need and all i've done so far for the hexapod is to write a class this is in its infancy basically just for the one leg i'd got working that i've set up um i've started playing with it to use the two boards we can create uh here we've got uh, the basic address uh the on the, sorry, the default address on a uh, on one of the Adafruit boards, uh, which is sixty four. Uh, I've then got sixty five for the second one, so I've got a board for my left hand servos, a board for my right hand servos, and I've started to build this with a view to adding methods uh, methods to it to implement some inverse kin kinematics on the. Uh, the hexapod, which should make it move in a, in a very insect-like fashion. You must understand the bar. So that's working as a proof of concept. I also have all the other parts collected here. Um, we have about 60 hours worth of 3D printed components for this. All the designs, everything I'm making, I will make fully open source and available to anybody who's interested. Doing my part. I'm doing my part too. Don't want to make it open source just yet until I've finished the thing and I know it works. But if anybody's interested in, in any specific uh, files, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll, happily, I'll happily make them available. View source. It's time to put it all together, really. Uh, so the next, the next video I release on this, we should see the whole thing, hopefully, moving.